how does high dynamic range affect what you do? For example, we'll go from 8-bit to 10-bit. You said that even now the, your, your content is delivered in 10-bit, and you've got to bring it down to 8 for Blu-ray. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, but now, uh, with high dynamic range, I wouldn't be surprised if it's delivered to you in 12-bit, and you're going to then probably have to take it down to 10. That's a good question. Um like studio deliverables for HDR content, um, mm -hmm. having not done it, having not done one yet, it, yes, it could be twelve. It could be twelve bit delivery. It could stay at ten. Um, it, it's an interesting subject because yeah, like obviously from going from ten bit down to eight bit, that's already something that I have to deal with. And the way you do the conversion actually depends on the the content of the picture. Like um, the way to the way to um, uh, convert 10 bit to 8 bit uh, for like a CG movie, for example, that has no film grain in there. Mainly, what you're doing there is fighting dither s, uh, or not fighting dither, fighting uh, banding. And to do that, the compressionist that 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 job does fall in the compressionist's hands um, uh, is is adding dither to the image, which, by the way, is totally a very convoluted workaround for getting banding free video into an eight, into uh, uh, an 8 bit delivery platform. But that's that's the the limitation we're stuck with with the current BD spec. Um, and just, yeah. just to make sure everybody understands, uh, you know, if, if you have an 8-bit signal that came from a 10-bit signal and you have to bring it down like that, you might very well get banding in the image that you will see in, the reason, when, the uh, when the color changes very gradually, like, like a blue sky or something, where this blue in this part of the scene might be very slightly different from the blue here. You'll see a, an edge or a boundary between them, and you're trying to hide that with dither, which is a form of noise, actually, that you're adding to the picture. Right. I mean, the best way to think of banding, I've actually heard there was a, it was a, it was a ma translated Japanese manual for one, one very, one video encoder that's very popular in Hollywood, uh, Cinemacraft encoder, um, and they, the, the, the Japanese authors of that didn't call banding; they called them tone jumps. Which actually, I think, mm. is a much better. That's a much better term, um, and and it, it is what it sounds like. Let's like you just described banding, where you would expect to see a smooth, continuous tone. You ins you, you can instead start to see little little ridges in there, um, and and yeah, that that arises if you have a 10-bit uh, source and you convert it to 8-bit simply by truncating, just you know, like cutting off the the least significant bits. Um, whereas, like you said, like like we we talked, the correct way to do that. The correct way to transform a 10-bit image into an 8-bit image um, is to to add very fine dither noise, which prevents the banding from occurring. But that goes completely against the whole um, the whole uh, uh, mechanisms of compression because these codecs are designed to strip out very small, very similar details like mm -hmm. dither. So right. essentially, what a compressionist has to do when they're adding dither to get into uh, a ten bit a ten bit source to, to, to produce a clean or a, a good looking eight bit output, um, is is configure the encoder in a way which um, the encoding engine um, it, it, it depends on the encoder, which is why I'm I'm hesitating here to to, to phrase this correctly. Um, sometimes you can get the source pre an eight bit source pre dithered. Which you then feed to the encoder, or sometimes the 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 encoding software handles the dither for you. Either way, you then have to adjust the encoding settings to absolutely preserve as much of the dither as you can, because if the encoder strips the dither out, you're back to square one again, and you're seeing banding. Um, so it's a right. very uh, very kind of convoluted uh, setup we have at the moment. But fortunately for me, because what I'm mainly dealing with is movies scanned from film. Um, yes, we'll dither anyway, but you, you you could truncate down to 8-bit and it would look the same with film with with most film content. With If there's enough grain in there, the grain itself actually acts as a dither. As so, a dither. I was, I was going right. to ask you that. Yeah, exactly. What, what, can, what can't film grain do? It's, it's magical, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, generally speaking, unless it's very fine grain or, you know, a very, very, maybe like a 65 millimeter millimeter. Um, uh, or 70 millimeter movie, you wouldn't really have to worry too much about about that with film content. It's mainly it's CG CG animation is the uh, the, the 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 danger zone for that kind of stuff mm -hmm. because it's so clean to begin with. It's just it's yeah exactly it's cleaner. It's you're, you're if there's any imperfections in that you're 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 absolutely going to see it. Yeah yeah.